Hey guys, how's it going? Marine King here. It is season 22, Love Stone. And today I would like to introduce the long awaited Firestorm 5.0 Mage deck. Now, for those of you who uh, may or may not be familiar, Firestorm is a type of deck that Brooklyn HS created um, many seasons ago and it has gone through several versions since then and what it is is a control style mage deck that is very quick and tempo based but it's not an aggro tempo deck it's uh, more of a control type of tempo deck and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean by that in this ongoing instructional series now uh, you would be happy to know that I was able to make legend with this just at the end of last season season 21 slam and shaman um, unfortunately, uh, I was not able to go through a detailed instructional series on that because for a lot of reasons that I'll get into later. But right now what I'd like to do is just take you a quick walk through the deck. A couple of cards that we run that are a little bit uh, off meta. We do run two copies of Arcane Blast, two copies of Arcane Missiles, two Mana Worm, two Arcane Explosion, two Frostbolt, Talnos, two Apprentice, two intellect, one ice barrier, two flame waker, one cone of cold, one echo medivh, one polymorph, one frigid snowbold, one anti kill bot, two azure drakes, one summoning stone, two, one blizzard, one arc mage, one flame strike, one arc mage antonitis. So, uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. And I'll explain what's going on as we go along the way. It's the uh, pretty early in the season now. And I'm going to go ahead and make my climb upward to Legend uh, using this deck and maybe a couple of the other decks that I would like to showcase. So, one of the things that I want to say right now is that the main difference uh, in this Firestorm compared to past ones is that this particular version of course ditches all the secrets so there won't be any secrets at all run here. Uh, what we usually look for ideally would be Flame Wakers, Apprentice, uh, Mana Worm. Actually Arcane Blast is as great of a spell as it is it's not necessarily the thing that we want to keep in our hand early because we're looking for minions, low carved minions. Especially uh, against Warrior, there's no reason to hold on to spells early. They won't be aggressive usually. Okay, so this is what we're looking for right here. We'll play the Mana Worm. So the theme of this deck, instead of being secrets like it has been in the past, is spells and spell plus damage. So it's a really exciting uh, change here. You guys will have a chance to see exactly what the inspiration behind this deck was. Uh, I wanted to push the potential of spell damage as far as I could. I was interested and I wanted to know how far could we really go with spell damage because spell damage is kind of an overlooked mechanic in this game um, and it's I would say it's underrated, but it's not really underrated. It's not well liked, and I understand why, because typically it's just not that strong. Uh, but, oh, okay. So what we're going to do is uh, I think I'd like to go ahead and just go ahead and use this now. Because if I play the other Apprentice and then play the spell, I'm still losing one of my minions, and I don't want to do that. Since uh, Arcane Explosion is not something that we may get a super great value on, I don't have any qualm about using it this early. Okay, this is great. So we'll go ahead and play Sorcerer's Apprentice, and we'd also like to uh, Frostbolt this because we don't want to uh, 
put him in the position where he can easily clear. We want to make this a little more difficult for him. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. So what we're going to do at this time is uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, freeze up his board, get an ice barrier going, and stall out the game a little bit, kind of get something going here. It won't be uh, that appetizing of a um, trade for him anyway. Like, I don't think he's going to want to slam his face into that 5-3. But he might if he has no other choice. That would be good for us, though. So what, all we're going to do at this moment is just play Archmage and hit face. A pretty simple turn. Because we have to play the Archmage anyway. I mean, it's obvious. Jesus. Patient assassin. <sighs> okay. What a lucky thing for him to draw right there. That's the game. So we end out at uh, 34 HP. And of course, uh, we kind of did end up a little bit in top deck mode there, but it's okay because part of the way that this deck plays is you need to put the enemy in a position where their back is really up against the wall. Maybe it doesn't matter as much, uh, you know how many cards you have in hand so long as you play it where you're maximizing the value of everything in the deck we're just going to go straight into next game since it was such a quick one uh, believe it or not we actually match up really well against control warriors um, control warrior for those of you who don't know always was kind of weak to fast mage decks and even really even slow mage decks so we're going to go ahead and toss all this because just as before, we look for um, low curve minions. We'll settle even for a, um, a flame waker. That's low enough. So one, two, and three curve minion. See, there goes a flame waker. Now, one of the really cool things about this deck is these plus, um, these plus damage... <clears throat> these plus damage spell damage minions uh, there is so much potential to be had with arcane blast I mean this doubles every time the spell damage so if you have plus uh, one then this becomes four but if you have plus uh, two then this just becomes crazy so <clears throat> I don't feel uh, like playing the flame waker exactly at this moment I think it would be a mistake to play it into that position because uh, Zulok type of decks they will buff the uh, the demon and then after buffing the demon uh, it just trades into your flame waker you lose it for free in my opinion so what we want to do okay 
Yeah. So what we want to do is just go ahead and play this, and we're going to go ahead and put the uh, Arcane Blast here. Hopefully, one of the procs will go on the 2 1. That was nice. Now we put him in a position where the only way to get a great value off of this egg would be he would have to um, power overwhelming it if he got that out of his peddler. Okay, I could deal with that. Okay. <clears throat> So one way we could do it is to trade and ping. But if we do that, then we're wasting three mana pretty badly. So instead, what we're going to do is use the Drake here. And here's why. Because when we use the Drake, we trade with this anyway. Okay, And he's not really any better on the board than he would have been if we didn't play the Drake. And we've drawn a card too. And now he's in a position to lose his 4-4 in the trade. Because one thing about zulock type minion is that they um they just got to trade like they always have this thing about they want to trade they want to trade they always want to trade so oh and he doesn't trade which uh gonna cost him And the cool thing, oh yeah, and that reminds me, pro tip guys, take notice of what happened there. When you do something like uh, a blizzard, okay, and it ca causes damage to generate a token like this, that token that came out is frozen. Because um, the reason why is as soon as you damage like the imp gang boss, it generates a token. And only then after generating the token does... Uh, the freeze effect come through so we'll just do a uh, I think a full flame strike would be the thing I want to do here tell you what yeah I'm gonna trade this first because otherwise I might be getting hit with a 7-7 seven, seven, and I don't want that to happen so I'll accept this a 1-1 one, one lives I think that's the best route that I could take there I don't mind taking in the damage from the boom bots that much since we do run uh, into kill bot. Okay. Five, six. So here's what you want to do. Uh, what we need to do is you need to play anti kill bot and ping because if you play Talnos and ping then you won't be able to do anything else with all that mana waste it just be wasted plus when we do blood mage Talnos then cone of cold is coming up so when he makes this trade here which he might if he doesn't it's fine but if he does then it dies anyway. Yeah, that's just beautiful though. Yeah, this is beautiful actually. Okay. Ooh, that is just noise. All right. So many good things I want to do. So. So we start with uh, the Cone of Cold. And we have four here, which means four, five, six. 
Okay, so this is the play. Make Kona cold here. Important, guys, okay? Arcane blast here. Spell damage here. Attack face there. Now we are like in a very good position. Okay. Okay. So what we do, play Flame Waker, Echo Medivh. Okay. Then we make this trait here. Do this trait here. There we go. Now you have to trade first before you do the Flame Waker because what were the chances that two fireballs would land on the same target if we left two targets up? The chance is like not there at all, so it's not good. So don't do that. Okay. Oh, that's one of the few counters too. Okay. So we'll do Flame Waker. Okay. Then the next thing we want to do is turn this to a ticken. Next, we just want to minimize our chance that we could possibly die. So, here. Okay. So, with the uh, ice barrier, we just can't die. It's GG. <clears throat> Tap to death. Classy. All right, guys, so uh, make sure that you give the current deck list and any guide that I've written a look, which will be in the bottom description of this video. Um, if this looked interesting to you and you want to try this for yourself, uh, you know, keep up to date with the latest um, updates because this deck is still very fresh and new. Um, I might be changing a, a minor thing here and there depending on what's happening in the meta, but basically... Um, what you see is kind of what you get for the moment. Uh, this is an ongoing instructional series, so make sure to check out uh, the other parts. This is just the first. And uh, you know what? Good luck, enjoy, and uh, happy rank climbing. Marine King out.